System 1, background ventilation compliance check made easy. This film aims to assist anyone who is checking that a dwelling complies with the background ventilation requirements of approved document F, ventilation of the building regulations for England and Wales. When a property complies with the building regulations via system one, which is localized extract fans in the kitchen and bathrooms, and most commonly trickle vents in the windows to provide background ventilation, there are a number of things that need to be considered for compliance of background ventilation in addition to the checks required for the extract fans. The quantity and size of the vents required depends on a few factors. Whereas traditionally the property used to comply with two vents in each habitable room and one in each non-habitable, the kitchen or a bathroom. This is why anyone approving the property's ventilation compliance, whatever the system adopted, now needs to closely reference approved document or part F for England and Wales or the technical standards for Scotland. In addition, there is a document called the Domestic Ventilation Compliance Guide, or DVCG, which is an aid memoir for this purpose and provides sign-off forms for contractors relevant to all ventilation system types, including whole house systems. The first thing that has to be established before checks can be made is the air tightness level of the property, as Part F uses two different tables to calculate the background ventilation requirement according to the air permeability. Air permeability is checked at 50 pascals. If it's not known or tighter than 5 meters cubed per hour per square meter of floor area, then this table is to be referenced. If it's greater, leakier than 5 meters cubed per hour per square meter of floor area, then it's this one, which doesn't require as much background ventilation. Let's say it's the former, and we'll explain what else you need to know before you start. The total ventilation is measured in millimeters squared EA, equivalent area, not to be confused with free area used a few years ago. Although shown in millimetre squared EA, this unit is in fact based on airflow rates, like the extract fans. The base figure is calculated by the total floor area of the dwelling, shown in squared metres, so the person checking needs to know this before starting, and the number of bedrooms in the property. Then, use the table to find the total EA required. There are also possible amendments to the total EA for single-storey dwellings on the fourth storey and above in multi-dwelling buildings, for single facade properties and for properties where occupancy levels are more than two to the main bedroom and one for all other bedrooms. All details on these considerations can be found in Part F. Once the total background ventilation requirements have been calculated as an EA figure, there's only one more thing to do to consider before beginning the check. That is, there must be a minimum of 5,000 mm squared EA in each habitable room and 2,500 mm squared EA in each wet room. This property requires a total of 60,000 mm squared EA because it is 90 m squared in floor area and has three bedrooms. Let's begin our check to see if there are enough vents to give us the 60,000 mm squared EA required. In each room, as well as adding up the vents, the person checking should ensure the vents are approximately 1.7 meters above floor level to keep undue drafts to a minimum. Each vent should be marked with an EA figure. Some have a label, others are molded in. It pays to check whether the slot behind the vent looks to be the right size for the vent. It shouldn't be much smaller than the vent length or width, otherwise the tested amount of air won't flow through and should be evenly cut. The operation of the vent should also be checked in case someone has painted or plastered over them since the windows have been fitted. There should be a cursory check of the external part of the vent usually the bit with the grill in it, to see that it is fitted correctly on the outside of the property and not blocked. The details of all the vent, slot, 
canopy combinations, which is how the vent manufacturers come up with their tested figures, should be available on the vent manufacturer's website, or if not clear, should be available from the window manufacturer who fitted them. Make a running total of the size of all the vents fitted as you go around the house, ensuring, as we mentioned earlier, that there's at least 5,000 EA in the habitable rooms and 2,500 in the wet rooms. In summary, we seem to have four vents at 4,400 EA in the lounge and two vents at 4,400 EA in the dining room. There are two vents at 4,400 EA in each of the three bedrooms. In the wet rooms, there is one vent at 4,400 EA in the main bathroom as well as two vents at 4,400 EA in the kitchen. This gives a total of 52,800 EA in the habitable rooms and 13,200 EA in the wet rooms. The total for the property is therefore 66,000 mm square EA, which makes the property compliant as we needed at least 60,000 mm square EA. This should now be noted in the Domestic Ventilation Compliance Guide, the DVCG, so it can be submitted. There is one more very important thing mentioned in the DVCG, that being that instructions on all ventilation devices should be left with the householder so they know how and when to use them. Many people are unaware of the importance of indoor air quality and assume an open vent is a bad thing and therefore leave them closed. This should not be the case. And it is even more crucial in the first few weeks of a property's life where the moisture from drying out building materials and the pollutants from new carpets and coverings needs to disperse quickly. It's a good idea for the person checking the dwelling to therefore leave the vents open ready for the occupant who may not move in for some time. Thank you for watching. And thanks also to Mersey Homes for the kind use of their properties seen in this film.